Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my uh, video on the alkali metals. Now, before you watch this video, make sure you remind yourself about um, bonding models, particularly the stuff about metallic bonding, about how to determine electron configuration, and about the reactivity of metals. Um, I've got videos on all those things earlier in this playlist, so check those out if you're not confident with that material. Now, in this video, we're going to look at what the alkali metals are, we're going to explore their reaction with water, and we're going to try and explain their reactivity as well. Okay, so the alkali metals. These are the metals in group one of the periodic table, and the first three of them are lithium, sodium, and potassium. The alkali metals are all soft metals with low melting points. Um, and by soft, they really are very soft, so you can literally cut them with a knife um, without much difficulty at all. Our first alkali metal, lithium, has the um, symbol Li, and it melts at 181 degrees Celsius. Our second one, sodium, has one of those difficult symbols. It's Na this time because it comes from a different language, and that is melts at 98 degrees Celsius, so even less than lithium. And then potassium, again, difficult symbol because it's a K, melts at 64 degrees Celsius, so even lower than sodium. And if we look at our pictures of them up here, this is lithium, sodium, and potassium in that order. You can see they've all got this kind of dull gray matte surface. That matte surface is there because these are all really reactive metals that will react really quickly just with the oxygen in the air. And so that dull surface is actually a coating um, of the oxide of each metal. Okay. Now, all of the alkali metals have just one electron in their outer shells, and the reason why is because they're in group one, and remember the group number tells us the number of electrons in the outer shell. So if we look at lithium, and lithium's atomic number is three, so it will have three electrons, two in its first shell, and one in the outer shell, which we can see just there. Sodium is the next period down, and so it has an atomic number of 11, which means 11 electrons, two in its first shell, eight in the second shell, and again, one in that outer shell. And finally, we've got potassium. Potassium down another group, so its atomic number is now 19. So it's got 19 electrons, two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, eight in the third shell, and again, that one on its own in the outer shell there. Now, when metals react they always react in such a way as to lose electrons and become positive ions so in the case of the alkali metals they will lose one electron to form m plus ions not m2 plus or m3 plus just metal plus ions and the reason why is because they lose their outer electrons to expose that full shell underneath so for lithium that looks like this this outer electron here goes and we end up with just an electron configuration of two, we end up forming a lithium plus ion because if you lose an electron because electrons are negative, you end up positive. Similar for sodium, it's going to lose the outer electron there to form a sodium plus ion with an electron configuration of 2.8. The electron we've just lost is written here, and we have a positive charge because if you lose something negative, you become positive. And then finally, for the potassium, again, we've lost that electron in the outer shell, so it forms a K plus ion. The electron configuration is 2.8.8, .8, and the electron that we've lost is written there as that plus E minus. Okay, so how do the alkali metals react with water? Well, they all do it in the same way. An alkali metal, when it reacts with water, produces a metal hydroxide and hydrogen gas. And if we look at the symbol equation for that, the symbol equations all have this same format where we say two of the metal react with two waters to produce two metal hydroxides, MOH, and one hydrogen gas molecule. So lithium, for example, when lithium reacts with water, it produces lithium hydroxide. And the observations you can see are that it floats on the surface of the water because it's got very low density and it rapidly bubbles. And you can see that happening in the little uh, video just on the right there. So you can see the way the 
um, lithium is floating around on the surface and rapidly bubbling. With sodium, sodium, the metal hydroxide this time it makes is sodium hydroxide, and the observations for it are that it floats again. This time it melts into a ball because it gets so hot as it's reacting really quickly, and it zips around on the surface. And you can see all those observations there in that little video on the right, if you look really carefully, the way the metal's melted into a ball and it's zipping around on the surface. And lastly, for potassium, you can see that it produces potassium hydroxide. The observations of this are that it floats, it melts into a ball again, it zips around on the surface, and it produces this lilac flame, lilac being that kind of light purple colour that you can see if you look really carefully. What also might happen with potassium is it might sort of pop and make a little small explosion, but the main observation we're looking for is that lilac flame. Okay, so now we need to be able to describe and explain the differences in the reactivity of the alkali metals. The first thing to note is that lithium is the least reactive one, then sodium is a bit more reactive, and potassium is the most reactive alkali metal, and actually the alkali metals below potassium are even more reactive than it, it's just we don't need to know about those for the GCSE. Now, whenever metals react, they always lose electrons to form cations, and we can see that described here where a metal becomes a metal cation M plus and the electron that it's just lost. So anything that makes the outer electrons easier to remove makes the metals more reactive. So how does that pan out in the case of the alkali metals? Well, first of all, as we go down the group, the number of electron shells increases. We can see that here, lithium at the top of the group has got just two shells, then sodium has got three shells and potassium has got four shells. Well, so what? The so what is that as we go down the group, those outer shell electrons are further from the nucleus. We can see that here. Look at that distance there between lithium's outer electron and the nucleus and compare it to potassium and the distance between its outer shell and the nucleus. You can see that in potassium, that outer electron is much further from the nucleus than it is for lithium. Well, so what? That means those outer electrons will be less attracted to the positive nucleus. Remember, the nucleus of every element is always positive. And so therefore, the further away the electrons are from that positive nucleus, the less attracted they will be to it. So what that means is that they're going to be more easily removed from the atoms, and that will mean that the atoms will become more reactive as we go down the group. So that's it, the end. Thank you for listening, and well done if you got this far.